welcome to your uh, restorative yin practice. Um, just start your practice, as I said, kind of wherever is most comfortable uh, for those of you joining in, that you don't have to be in a particular pose or shape. You can just lay down, you can be in a comfortable seat. Just take these first couple moments of your practice to arrive. And allow your eyes to close. And don't feel like you have to jump into this practice, that there's an element of settling, an element of just kind of easing in. So especially the yin, especially the restorative practices, there's no race to get anywhere, that it really is just based around holding a particular shape for an amount of time that we get the opportunity to unwind. Okay. In these first few moments of your practice, you may just notice the space around you and any distractions, any sounds that are calling your attention or any background noise. And see if, as you notice this, you can just simply switch your awareness to something else. So it's almost like you're just scanning the horizon of the present moment. So just taking in the different sounds, the different feelings, in the different textures, smells. And at the same time that you notice these, you still have the capacity to be present. So none of these experiences are taking you out of this moment. They're able just to observe. And then can you take this observation into a little bit more depth and just start to notice the internal environment. So noticing maybe the sound of your breath. You might notice if there's a little bit of resistance to this stillness, a little bit of resistance to slowing down or shifting your day to this moment. But that's a part of this internal environment. You might notice some thoughts that are showing up or repeatedly coming back around. You might even notice any leftover feelings from the weekend or last week. Really just noticing now how it feels to be within your own body. So not just in this external environment, but what is the internal environment's feeling? What is the experience of just sitting with yourself for a moment? And then whatever that is, just give yourself permission that it's okay to be there. But at the same time, you can always come back to the breath. You don't have to necessarily shift this internal environment, but just allow yourself the space to be present. And then knowing what internal environment you landed in, can you begin to create an intention? So when we can acknowledge how we've arrived, what we're experiencing in this moment, what's kind of happening both around and within, that we start to recognize our own needs. Sometimes that's a need to slow down. Sometimes that's a need to get going and get out of this rut or groove we're in. Sometimes we need to be a little bit more present or more grateful for all of the beauty around us. So just starting to recognize what do you need right here to just feel a little bit maybe more full or what do you need to get through the rest of your day, the rest of your week. And this is something that's within us, not something outside of us. It's not material that it's something like confidence, self-love, 
patience. And so as you start to just think about this, just allow it to kind of saturate or roll through your mind without feeling this attachment to it. So just noticing what maybe you need and allow that to be this intention of your practice that it's more of an anchor. So instead of us attaching to that, the need is actually our anchor that we can come back to. It's a place of grounding. So just allow this intention to be something that is always available for you and just something that brings you out of those distractions, out of getting lost into right here, right now. All right, take a big, full, deep breath in through your nose, fill all the way up. And then exhale out through your mouth, just let that go. Let's take two more breaths to start our practice. Inhale through your nose, allow your breath to rise all the way down towards your belly. And then exhale out through your mouth, release. Let's take one more full belly breath in. And exhale breath out. If you are in seated, gently make your way onto your back. We're gonna start in Banana Asana today. If your floor is really hard, you can always take a pretty skinny pillow underneath the back of your head. And then it might feel nice if you're on your back just to take that nice big stretch overhead. So reaching your arms behind you and pointing through your toes. See if you can gain a little bit more length as you inhale. And then as you exhale, just soften. Before landing fully in banana asana, let's bring a little bit of space into the spine, knees into your chest, arms will wrap around tops of your shins, and just gently rock side to side, massaging out your low back and top of your pelvic girdle, allowing for some slight compression into your hips. All right, and then whenever you're ready, you're gonna take that big expanded shape again, legs and arms straightened in opposite directions. So slowly planting your feet, reach your arms overhead. You might even take that inhale to find a little bit more length. And on the exhale, you'll begin to pour your body to the right corners of your mat. So you can start lower body, walking your feet to the right corner or even off of your mat. And then once you feel pretty grounded with the feet, check in with the hips, that both of your hips are grounded so that your left hip isn't lifting up. And then you can begin to draw the arms over. You might even walk your shoulders if you're looking for a little bit more depth. And then the shape of this pose is really up to each of you. So you can have your feet apart. You can have your big toes together. If you cross your left ankle over your right with legs extended, you'll get a little bit more sensation. If you cross your right ankle over your left, instead of the sensation through the left side of your body, you'll be a little bit more through the front, so a little bit more into the core. And then for arms, if you extend the arms, you'll feel this lengthening all the way from your left pinky down towards your hip. You can also cactus the arms to take this more into the tricep or back of the left arm. Or if that feels like too much, you can always drop your right arm beside you and just cactus or diamond shape the left. Allow your head to rest wherever is comfortable. So whether your gaze is over your right shoulder or gaze is up at the ceiling, there's no right or wrong. Now, if you've been in this for a while and you start to feel the low back, Kind of achy or not very happy with you <laughs> then you can just simply come out of that depth or what I like to do is to slide the right heel and plant the right foot and that allows you to roll more towards your left hip so that you're taking any twisting that might have occurred out of the low back but you're still keeping that banana shape of the body okay now that we've settled in here for a couple of moments, see if you can take a body scan and notice where you're holding tension. And then just start to soften into those areas. So when we initially come into this pose, sometimes we 
try to grip or we try to control it. And the restorative practice is all about relaxation. So sometimes that means coming out of the depth that we've originally chosen, just so that we can find more depth in just being present. So that you can still have this whole horizon view of the present moment without being sucked into one sensation one thought, one feeling, that distractions just come and go and we just simply are aware of them without needing to label or have a reaction to that distraction. And this is essentially the goal of meditation, if there really is a goal, is that we start off really small in a really quiet environment where we are really setting ourselves up for success. But ideally, as we get a little bit more comfortable, that we can find this mindfulness practice even in places that are busy. That perhaps one day on a busy street corner, you would be able to just sit and be completely at ease despite the world moving really fast around you. And so here, there might be some distractions, but know that that's a part of this practice, that this is where we really get to practice. What is it to let go of reaction and our attachment to need to judge something? What is it to let go of our need to feel something about a distraction? Can we just simply acknowledge it and release? Last couple of breaths on this side. If you soften through the shoulders again, allow the backs of your heels, hands, and arms to rest heavy. And then gently, one part of your body at a time, you'll just begin to bring yourself back through center. So maybe start with a hands and shoulders, and then cross your ankles, and then walk your heels back into the center of your mat. Bending into your knees, take your knees into your chest and just feel that release into your low back. So if there was any tension building up there, just allowing for some space as you hug your knees in close. And then gently release the soles of your feet down. This time you're shifting your hips, but your shoulders are gonna stay. Pick your hips up and over to the right side of your mat. You can heel toe your feet over there as well. Okay, take your right knee into your chest and then cross your right ankle over top of your left thigh. So you're in a bigger four shape with the legs. Now this is where you can always use props, books, or you can use pillows if your foot doesn't quite land to the ground. You'll slowly lower your knees over to the left. So your right foot is going to land on the ground. Now there's a couple of ways to play with this shape. You can wrap your left hand around your right foot, ankle, shin to give you that support, but then you can begin to draw your right knee away from your body or you can even roll your lifted right hip towards the ground. So it'll still be lifted, but it's just more of an active pose. So diving a bit more into a yin twist. If you want to make this more restorative, you can always just allow the big toe edge of your foot to come towards the ground, knee draws over. And you can always use props. So if your foot doesn't reach the ground, take your foot onto a prop or your knee can come onto a prop. Just make sure that there's no pulling in the lower back in this shape. So wherever you've landed, that your spine might be feeling some sensation, but it's not a pulling or a painful sensation. And then if you have the bind, right arm comes out wide. If you don't, you can take the left arm out wide, cactus or diamond shape the arms. And come back to your breath especially if in that transition of movement, you might have lost a little bit of 
being in the present moment, being so focused on where our body is that we started to get a little bit too focused and we lost that whole horizon view. And so just allowing yourself to just kind of notice the different sensations, even outside of that right hip. Notice maybe the feeling of heaviness that you can offer your body to just sink into the ground. The heaviness of your eyelids. Know if at any point when you're in this twist, it starts to either become painful or the pose itself becomes a distraction from that mindfulness. But you can always reset through center. You can always uncross the legs and take a more traditional variation of twist as well but just both knees over to the left. And so you're about halfway through. And knowing that if there's any shifts you need, they're always available for you. I think one of the, one of the lessons that took me a while to learn with the yin practice is that it's not about perfection of staying in a pose for the set period of time. It's about the functionality and about the experience. And for so long, I thought myself trying to go into a depth that I thought was where I needed to be. And then when I kept getting these little signals from my body that it was too much, that it was starting to cause me anxiety, that I was starting to have to really grip to hold there, that I was losing the practice of being present. I was losing the practice of non-harm to the body. And I was putting the ego ahead of the self. I was putting this idea that you had to be a certain way ahead of what was really functional for my body. And so this is where, when you find yourself at war with yourself within your practice, this is a pretty good indication that we're missing those little messages. And so to just reset sometimes, to take the break, to get clear, so that we can come back into this in a way that's really nourishing. Take five more breaths in whatever variation of twist you've landed in. Notice if there's a little bit more space in your exhale. And if your gaze is over your right shoulder, you can just gently lift your eyes up towards the ceiling. And slowly lift your knees back up through center and then untangle your legs. You plant your feet and shift your hips back into the center of your mat. Walk your feet out wide and just gently wash your knees over to the right and over to the left. Feeling into just a little bit of movement, the release of some of those stuck sensations that felt like they were going to stay there forever. Just notice how they're starting to fade. All right, so this next pose, it's supported snail. You can use, I wouldn't use books, I would use soft props. So you can use as many pillows as you'd like, you can use bolsters. So you're going to keep your feet planted, hip width distance. Hips are in line with shoulders, so we're back in the center of our mat. As you press into your feet, pick up your hips enough that you can slide those props underneath your low back. Okay, so it starts in a supported bridge, but then it's gonna shift a little bit. Once you come into your supported bridge and it's your hips that are being lifted, then begin to bend your knees into your chest. So you might need to adjust this prop slightly so you can always shift side to side if you need it higher up or further down. Okay. 
there's a couple of options. So when sneeze or in chest, you can just wrap your hands behind the backs of your legs, so on top of your hamstrings. And the prop is essentially just lifting up your low back. You can extend the legs to turn this more into a supported plow with the toes going overhead towards the back of the room. This might also look like this and that's okay. Just make sure there's not a really intense pulling in the back of the legs. We're looking for soft here and for that release in the low back. So you can always keep a bend into the knees even if legs are extended. They don't have to be perfectly straight. This pose can be done without the block. So if you want to play with that, watch first so that when you do try it, you'll bring your gaze up to the ceiling. So your neck isn't twisted over to the side as you're putting a little bit more pressure on your shoulders. You can press into the ground on either side of you or press into your prop and that's where you'll lift your hips away from the ground and then you'll take your hip hands to your low back or to hips to support. And then this is where you're just starting to draw the toes overhead. Make sure in this variation that there's not a lot of pressure on the head. The weight is in the shoulders. And then you can also, if your knees are bent, take them to either side. So they almost land onto your shoulders. So whatever variation you're playing with, it's a rounding of the spine. And so you're just looking for that release, especially after the twists, especially after the lateral flexion and maybe a little bit of curvature in the low back, a little bit of that arc that we're now looking to release. Mm -hmm. Know that you can always come back to any variation that worked for you if where you currently are isn't serving you. And just simply allow your breath to bring you through. So you notice how you can expand your inhales all the way down your spine towards your hips. And your exhale is almost like a rinse up the spine. A release, you might feel your body drop heavier. If you have come into the more active variation of snail or plow, and just slowly start to lower yourself back down. So it's like one vertebra at a time until your hips land and your hands are helping with this transition. You slowly bend into your knees, so knees are coming into your chest. And we're just gonna take one other pose here. Supported happy baby couple of options. Hands can come onto your shins and you'll just separate your knees away from one another. If you want, you can take your hands to inside or outside edges of your feet and allow your knees to drop down towards the sides of your rib cage, or you can even take your toes or heels in towards one another, more in that child's pose shape of the legs. So hands onto shins will be more restorative, hands to feet will be a little bit more of the yin pose. So this transition is shifting some opening into backs of the hamstrings, into inner thighs. If you're craving some movement, you can always play with straightening out the legs, but eventually you wanna find a soft place to land where you can be still. Now if the bolster or pillows under your low back feels awkward, you're always welcome to come back to your supported bridge to take them out and then meet into a happy baby. But with that extra support, they're just helping to lift up the hips. So you're getting that opening through the lower back without really having to try so that the muscles there can be completely relaxed. And even here, maybe not having to grip so tightly with the hands, but just kind of allowing yourself almost to melt into the shape and then to just stay in that experience. The second part of the restorative practice that when I first tried it years and years ago, 
I believe my mom took me to a practice when I was 17 or 18 or something and it felt lazy it felt like I wasn't doing any work and this is because my perspective of work and what what was right what was purposeful was activity it was doing it was go 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 and the restorative practice can feel a little bit lazy I remember thinking I was bored in it and I think this is a really big indication that we're just not open to sitting with ourselves that there's so much actually happening within this shape as we just sit in the parasympathetic nervous system. We allow our body to be in this rest and digest place. So our body is able to create new cells. It's able to discard old or damaged ones or even repair them. That we're digesting our food, therefore sending nutrients to our body that our body is just functioning at this level that it really should be always functioning at. And when we're doing activity, when we're stressed, our body can't function at that optimal place necessarily because it has other jobs to do. So when we come into this place of rest, it's our body's healing space. It's where our body just gets to take a break. And so even if on the outside it doesn't look like a lot, this is just a reminder that there's so much happening under the surface that is necessary. And so for this last minute in this shape, can you even do a little bit less? If that means just bringing knees into chest or hands onto shins, or maybe it's just about less activity of the mind and just simply focusing on movement of the breath. let go of your perspective that more is better and embrace this idea of less. If you do have a hold of your feet, you can just gently release Bring your hands to your shins, and you'll take your knees into your chest. And then slowly, one at a time, take your feet to the earth. All right, it might feel nice to stretch out long here, so you can always take one leg at a time, or you can take both. You might even take your arms over your head. You're gonna feel a slight curvature in the low back. That's okay, just holding for a couple of breaths. And then whenever you're ready, you'll plant your feet again. Pick up your hips to release your pillows or bolsters out from under. Okay, and then slowly lower around to your low back. If you need some movement, windshield wiper the knees or take knees into your chest. We are creating more of a circle sequence today, so don't worry. I have forgotten about our first pose, but we're going to revisit that in a little bit. Coming back to our twists. Feet are planted, shoulders in the center of your mat. Pick up your hips enough that you can shift them over to the right side this time. <laughs> Had to think about that. Sorry, no, don't shift them over to the right, shift them over to the left, there we go. <laughs> okay, you can walk your feet with you, just keep your shoulders in the center. Pick up your left knee, cross your left foot over top of your right thigh. So you're in that figure four shape again. And then you'll just slowly begin to lower your feet over to the right. So your left foot plants, right hand might wrap your left foot. If you're wrapping, you might need to heel toe the foot in a little bit closer to the hip crease. Maybe you play with drawing your left knee away from your body towards the short end of your mat, or you might roll your left hip towards the ground to get a hip opener in this twist. If you took a different variation on the other side, like just knees together, or you just allowed your legs to cross. Know that's always available. And any space that you feel in this pose between your body and the ground, even that left hip can be wedged with a pillow, 
you can fill those gaps of space with props so that you're comfortable within the shape and you're not having to hold yourself up. Allow your gaze to fall the opposite direction than the last time. So it might be over your left shoulder. Eyes rest heavy again. And just allow yourself to be in this place of nourishment. So even though it is a yin posture and it's a little bit more of that stress to the connective tissues to create opening, that it's not about adding stress to the mind or to other areas of the body. So we're specifically focusing on lengthening into your left hip and into the spine to really nourish those joints. And so looking at your practice as nourishment over depth or ego. And to just come back to that simple question of does this feel nourishing? Does this feel good for the body? Or does it feel like I'm fighting against myself? And to really sit with that question, allow that answer to just unfold and allow that answer to then bring you into any shifts or any changes you need to make. So that we're not stuck in a pose that's not serving us, but we really just allow ourselves to be available, to go with those ebbs and flows, to feel the distractions and then come back to center. Sometimes the shifts aren't even physical at all. It's a mental shift back to awareness or an emotional shift to let go of any reactions and emotions that we've attached to. And just allowing ourselves some more space to just simply be here and observe. restorative practice it's even in the name that this is meant to restore the body so letting go of tension creating space restoring back to neutral so especially if our normal is in that very yin go 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 push move always be busy we're restoring back to this place of neutrality. So it's not restoring to laziness or apathy. It's restoring back to where we're available for both, where we can breathe, but we can also do good for the body. So it's restoring the balance really. And so because most of our day is in this extremely yang place of movement or thinking or doing, allow yourself the opposite for a moment, to be in a space of clarity, of relaxation. And this balance, even though it's not a 50-50, that's okay because it's gonna bring us into more of that neutrality. That it, balance doesn't always have to look perfectly half and half, but sometimes it's just finding those moments where you can balance out a little bit too much yang energy with an offering of the yin or the restorative. See if you can soften into these last five breaths of your twist, whatever your variation you've chosen. And at the end of your fifth breath, you'll just slowly Unwind your gaze back through center and your hips. Release the cross of your feet. Shift your feet out wide, hips back through center. And then just gently drop your knees left and right. 
Now revisiting that first asana, banana. And take a nice big full body stretch. Reach the arms overhead, extend through the toes. You can take a couple of breaths here, just feeling into the opening of the inhale, the softening of the exhale. And then whenever you're ready, hips are now the anchor of your practice. You can walk your heels to the bottom left corner. Hands and shoulders can walk over to the top left corner. Optional to cross ankles. You can plant your left foot. You can cactus the arms or keep them straight. So really just finding what works for your body. And maybe if it's been a while, you can come back and revisit your intention of why you showed up on your mat, just to keep you rooted in this mindfulness. So instead of getting frustrated by the distractions or of getting stuck in certain places of the practice, is just remember that there was a reason you showed up here. There was something that you were offering your body, something that you maybe needed, especially today. And this is your way of giving back. Allowing yourself stillness, quiet, even just space to breathe. Space to hear your thoughts without needing to fix them or without needing to do. To just be in this place of ebb and flow. It's almost like you're stepping into another world where you can watch the world spin really fast around you, but wherever you are, it's like this bubble in time where you just get to be still. Where we get to disconnect from the outside world so that we can recharge that internal environment and really check into our own needs and give back to that. It's almost like unplugging to recharge, opposite of what we often think we need. One of the big things that has really come up for me and in a lot of conversations with friends is the uncertainty of what is the right path of how much work we should be doing of when do we start our work day of how do we manage kids or work-life balance of what does it look like to be at home right now Perhaps what is our new normal? How do we move through that? And what's the right way to do it? And I think that's causing a lot of the stress because it's taking that external world into the internal. The uncertainty of the external world and now it becomes stress for us to have to try to figure out or piece together. And so this is where Coming back to nourishment, coming back to this restorative practice, I think is really, really important. And just to check in, not with the right answer to the outside world, but the right answer to the inside. Because we ultimately, we always know what we need. We know that right answer. And so to just sit with yourself for a moment of what is your body craving? What could you offer yourself in this moment to be nourishing? What, what is nourishing for you right now? And that's really the right, so to speak, answer. You don't have to have everything else figured out. You don't have to take the perfect path, if there even is one, but really just to give back to yourself and to just take this day by day 
hour by hour, breath by breath. And just take a nice big full breath in through your nose, fill all the way up. And exhale out through your mouth. Let's take one more full belly breath in. And long exhale breath out. Gather yourself back through center, maybe upper body and then lower body. Once again, you'll bend into your knees, take your knees into your chest and feel any releases or shifts that are happening in your body. You can stay here as long as you need. And when you're ready, you'll just simply roll yourself over to your right hand side for a fetal position. Head can rest heavy into your right bicep, allowing your spine to come into a place of neutrality. And you can use your left hand to press yourself up. Moving to tabletop. This is where it might be nice just to shift so you can always move side to side. You can take a couple of cat cows. We've been on our backs for a majority of practice so just to create a little bit of rinsing of the spine. And we're going to shift that perspective completely and move towards our bellies. So when you're ready, just slowly lower yourself down and take your hands one on top of the other, forehead to your hands, and just pause for about five breaths. Walk your feet out wide so the tops of your feet are on your mat. Heels can fall in or out. And just feel your breath. So being on your belly is a really beautiful place to take those full belly breaths not just into the chest, but allowing your diaphragm to move. So you'll feel your belly press into the ground. And then you'll feel your belly hollow out and your rib cage get a little heavier as you exhale. Just about two or three more breaths, just like that. And you'll slowly just lift yourself up onto your forearms, mostly so that you have some space to shift into this next pose. Thread your left hand and arm under your body. So you'll take your left hand in that gap between your right elbow and your rib cage. And then you'll slowly begin to slide your left fingertips over to the right side of your mat, palm is face up. And this is where you might want your pillow. So sorry, I probably should have told you that before. Pillow under your cheek is actually really nice just for a little bit of support. And if you need more, just roll your pillow up so it's a little bit higher. Okay. Right arm can extend out straight. You can bend the right arm into a cactus or a diamond shape. Really just find a comfortable place for the right arm. Okay, to release the low back, we're gonna add in a half or a sleeping frog. So slowly slide your right knee up towards the top right corner of the room or even just out to the right side. So the inner edge of the foot, calf, inner thigh, it's all connected to the ground. You can always place blocks or actually more so props. So I'd take pillows underneath your knee or thigh if there's a really big gap there, if your ground is quite hard. If at any point this twist for the upper body isn't feeling really nourishing, you can always take it out. I'm threading and just come back into frog. So that opening for the hips. And if you are in the twist, just making sure you can walk your left shoulder away from your ear. So you're still creating that length in the side of the neck and in the top of the shoulder. Still having that opportunity, being on your belly to feel into your breath. This is probably my most favorite restorative pose. Because it really is like you're just sleeping. 
and that you're in this state of awareness without really having to do or to hold yourself up, that you're completely supported. And you can give that nourishing breath to your body to bring in some fresh new oxygen. That breath work is actually really energizing. And by just simply breathing, we can actually even just shift our energy for the day. So taking those really deep inhales and exhales that you can calm your body through this physiological change of the breath, which ultimately sends messages to the nervous system and to the brain to calm the mind. That we don't have to be in this place of anxiety or this place of worry or a place of overthinking that we can just breathe and it's okay to pause for a moment. Notice how even just that last minute or so stillness and quiet felt. Offer yourself that space to just be okay with where you are when you're there. To not have to wage a battle or war every time something doesn't go right or something's different or new or challenging. It's okay just to embrace that moment. And gently begin to slide your right toes down to meet your left. Press into your right hand to lift your body up just enough that you can unthread your left arm and then come back down onto your belly, hands underneath your head. You're craving movement, pick up your heels and drop your heels over to the left and over to the right. And just simply finding the other side and drop the tops of your feet down onto your mat. Lift your upper body enough that you can now thread your right arm underneath. Left hand can grab that pillow to bring a little bit more comfort. And then when you're ready, left knee will slide up towards the top corner of your mat or even just out towards the left. The more that you roll towards your left hip and left shoulder to the ground, the juicier and more sensation you'll feel in this pose. The more you roll towards your right side, the less. So just finding that balance for you. Remember that nourishment doesn't necessarily have to look a whole lot like doing. Our body is so incredibly equipped to heal itself, but it needs our cooperation to give it the time, to give our body time and space to heal. And I think often what comes in the way of our own healing is actually ourself that we try to force our healing or we try to sabotage it sometimes. And really, our body is really incredible. It has these systems that have been placed for thousands and thousands of years. And so perhaps today you just trust that. You come back to your intention, trusting that whatever you needed from your practice, you can still find even here it's just a matter of letting everything else drop off to the side 
and allowing your attention to land with that intention. So peace, love, courage, space. And that even if there's distractions that are unpeaceful, there are moments we don't feel lovable, that that intention is still there. That we can notice those maybe moments below the line. And we can just respond with our intention of peace, of love, of courage. That even if you tense up and you go into some stress, you just respond with relaxation, soften into those muscles, allow your body to rest heavier, and just continue to create this habit or pattern of bringing your intention into your practice, all the while allowing your body to rest, to let go of worry, to melt away tension and stress. And gently, you'll slide your left toes down to meet your right, unwinding your body from your twist. Lower down, take your hands up your shoulders, last pose of our practice, press them into your hands, lift up through tabletop again. And this is going to be really nourishing for the low back, is to just come into a child's pose. I recommend a restorative child's pose, so instead of being in the really Yang variation where you're lengthening out the spine, but you can take a soft bend into the arms, allow your forehead or cheek to rest heavy. If you do have a couple of firmer pillows, you can always take the pillows either between your, or in between your legs, so that your belly and then your chest has a place to rest and arms just wrap around, almost like you're hugging the sides of your pillows. Either cheek can come down or forehead. You can also just take pillows underneath your chest as well, or pillows behind your knees. If you find that your knees get really tight or sore in child's pose, and you can always roll them up if you need a little bit more support. But really focusing on that rounding of the spine. So it's not about lengthening or getting somewhere, but allowing your body to just come into the shape of opening of the back without having to use any of your muscles to hold you up. And soften into the back of the neck. Allow your chin to slightly tuck in towards your chest if your forehead is to the ground or on your bolster or pillows. And then breathe into any spaces of tension in your low back. Allowing your breath to travel almost like it's moving vertebra by vertebra from the base of your skull all the way towards your tailbone. And you feel this ripple current through your spine as you lift through the upper back, the mid back, the low back expands. And then as you exhale, releasing low back, mid back, upper back, and then fully letting yourself rest heavy. So we're not gonna be here for too long really more as a reset to all of the work that we've done with the spine, all of the twisting, any of the flexion and extension. And 
can you just breathe into those areas of tension and imagine that each inhale is a warm liquid traveling into those muscles or joints, melting away the stress, the tension, the stickiness. And then each exhale is a cooling rinse of water taking that away. Take three more breaths. And then as we move to Shavasana, try to keep your eyes closed if possible. So you're not taking any external distractions around you that you're just gonna slowly shift back to your tabletop. If you need movement, you're welcome to take it and you'll just simply begin to make your way onto your back. You can always hug knees into chest or windshield wiper knees, but eventually landing with legs out wide, arms down beside you. And why I say this is that, especially with a home practice, Shavasana is really easy to skip or to feel like you've done the practice, but this is really what ties it together. So this is a thread that weaves us back into this connection with self. It's this moment to let go of anything that didn't serve us through our practice, any tension or stress that did come up. And just a really beautiful offering to self to be in this state of complete relaxation, to be in this state of complete giving back to self, full, full nourishment. So just taking a couple of deep breaths as you land here, allowing any thoughts of your day just to fade away. And that Remember wherever you are that you have what you need. So that intention is here. Sometimes you just have to create a little bit of space for it to land. And as you move through whatever this experience is, know that there are no rules. That you are already strong, courageous, loved, enough. Even when you have moments of feeling yourself falling apart, even when your knees hit the floor or your grief meets you in floods, even when your body racks with sobs crafted in the belly of a tsunami, or when sorrow or anger feel like an endless sea of drowning. Your fortitude is right there inside of you. Your strength is within, and you can always call it up when you want to. You can call up courage, peace, love, and light. And that survival, resilience, strength will look different on each of us. On some of us, it'll look like still waters, and on others, it might look like a dam bursting as the water falls. So remembering to just give yourself this time to sit with yourself, to find what you need, and to know that it's been there all along. You just need to give it space. We'll close back here on our back so you can take as much time as you need to shift out of this shape and to really gracefully transition to the rest of your day. So to not just leave your practice here on your mat, but to allow yourself the space to move. So from the bottom of my heart, namaste.